And we're back. We're going to do some mechanics on this one, and we're looking at a pendulum, a circular motion. And specifically, um, I know a lot of students tend to get confused or kind of tense up, perhaps, when, when you have to find tension uh, at any particular angle as the pendulum is swinging back and forth. So the, the trick is, as always, is to remember that uh, any kind of circular motion, whether it's orbits or swing rides at a place like Great America or a pendulum, um, stunt planes that dive down and go into circles, roller coasters with loop -de loops all these things require a net centripetal force, mv squared over r. And we're going to approach this as we do any kind of Newton's law problem, where the, the picture is a big part of it. Uh, the picture is going to set up your solution. We're going to draw a force diagram, and what's a little bit different for circular motion problems is you want to also identify on the diagram where the center of the circle is. So for a, a pendulum that's swinging back and forth, um, the force diagram is easy enough. We're going to ignore air friction as, as usual. But the only two that you have to worry about are the, the gravity, the weight of the, the little mass, and then the tension, which is what we're basically after in this one, uh, in the string. So the other thing that's part of this diagram is the center of the circle, which is at the top. So, no matter where you are on the swing, uh, the tension is always pointing along the radius, which is the string itself. So that's going to be part of your centripetal force. But what's weird about this is a, a piece of gravity uh, is also tugging away from the center. So in other words, if we break gravity into two components, gravity is doing two things at once. It's tugging on the string, and it's also pointing downhill, so to speak, um, tangent to the circle. So this would be our, our angle that we usually talk about. So mg cosine of the angle is your centrifugal, with the f pointing away from the center, and mg sine is your tangential force, causing a tangential acceleration. That's the piece, uh, kind of like if you're on a, a hill, that that's going downhill, it causes you to accelerate, both speeding up and slowing down as you swing back and forth. That, that's the piece responsible for that. Now, because everything changes with angle, as we can see with our gravity components, um, that means, you know, if, if, we, if we want to do centripetal force, mv squared over r, we have to figure out what the v squared is, what the speed is. And energy is definitely the way to go. Uh, you know, non-constant forces and Newton's laws would, would be a calculus problem, so if, if you can avoid that, go for it. <laughs> um, and energy is, is what we do. So this is the energy. If you happen to know what your maximum angle is, you can figure out what your total energy is at the, the high point of your swing. And then for any angle beyond that, while it's actually swinging, we can figure out how much potential energy you have. Keep in mind that the height we're talking about here is is L minus L cosine theta. Uh, L cosine theta, if you look at this dashed triangle on our picture, is this piece right here. And the total length is where you'd be at, at the bottom of your swing. And so the height is just that, that little piece there. Um, and then kinetic energy. So that's where we can get the V squared. Let's just go ahead and write our force equations down. This is really the, the key part. So we have... Uh, it's two-dimensional, so we, we have the centripetal part, the radial part of the motion. That's mv squared over radius. The radius of your circle is, is the length of the string. And looking at our picture, we, we now have it. Um, tension points towards the center, so that's a positive force. And mg cosine theta points away from the center, making it a negative centripetal force. That's where we're going to solve for tension. Um, that's the, the so-called radial part, or centripetal part. Radial is just another name you sometimes hear. You have a tangential part of the motion. Mass times the tangential acceleration. And that's simply going to be, in terms of the magnitude, mg sine of the angle. And that's it. I mean, that, that, those are the only forces that you have. And so, um, if, if you're able to find the speed from the energy, 
So you could actually throw that into the equation down here for any given angle. Um, we could find out what the gravity component is at that particular angle, and then you can solve for tension. So the tension is simply going to be whatever mv squared over the length is plus that piece of gravity. Okay, so uh, in the end, yeah, it, it's just a circular motion problem. It's uh, non-constant because things change with the angle as you swing. Um, it's two-dimensional. You have a radial part, or, or a tripodal part, and then you have tangential forces and tangential motion. Uh, you have energy conservation working for you. And in the end, depending what you are given and what you need to find, we can relate everything through Newton's laws, the usual way. So I, I hope this helps a little bit. And uh, until next time, we'll see you later.